Church Tech Weekly presents LDI 2014, brought to you by Church Tech Arts, your source for everything related to live production in the church. Visit our website at churchtecharts.org. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> we good. All right, well, this is a little bit unusual at our LDI coverage that we're uh, looking at an audio console here, but it turns out that uh, Roland fairly recently released the new uh, M5000 Live Mixing Console and just happened to be here in this uh, room upstairs, and uh, so we thought we'd come up and take a look at it. So here we are I'm with um, Doug uh, from Roland, and he's going to kind of just, just walk us through the highlights. I know there's a ton of things to this thing and probably take us 45 minutes to go through all of it, but in fact, it did take us 45 minutes to go through all of it a minute ago, <laughs> but just some of the highlights, the, the big picture highlights of this console, uh, kind of let people know what it's all about and okay. why we're excited about it. Okay, great. Um, yeah, so it's the M5000 console, and kind of the main thing we want to let you know, first of all, is that it's the first console on a, a new platform that we've uh, created, and that platform is uh, what we call ORCA. It's O-H-R-C-A. What those mean are open, high resolution, and configurable architecture. So what do we mean, what do we mean by that? Um, open uh, refers to the fact that now we have a card slot system. So not only do we have our proprietary React uh, Cat5 network um, system, but we also can adapt to other systems that are out there like MADI, uh, Dante, uh, Wave Sound Grid, uh, just, as, as some, uh, just some examples. Um, the next one is high resolution. So in 2005, when we first started making uh, digital snakes, we had the foresight to make them be able to um, run at 96K, 24 bit. So even though our consoles until now have been running at 44.1 or 48, we've actually uh, up, updated so um, our new console, the M5000s, actually can run at 96K. So now all of our snakes, so inputs to outputs, all at 20, uh, 96K, 24 bit system. Um, and then the last part is configurable architecture. So normally you, when you had a, a console in front of you, you might have um, a demo where you say, this is how many inputs this console has, this is how many outputs this console has. For this guy, we don't need to say that. We actually give you 128 paths and we allow you to determine for your application what makes sense as far as inputs and outputs. Just to show you uh, how that works, um, first thing we want to come into is our, our setup menu here. When I hit setup, mixer configuration, Here's where I can get kind of a visual of what that means, my configurable architecture. So down below we can see um, exactly where our resources are being used. Here I have a, a, a section that tells me my remaining resources. And up top are where I assign. So for instance, right now I have input channels of 74. If I wanted to add some of those 74, I could come over here and add as different amounts. I also have mains. I can get into anything from mono all the way to 5.1 uh, plus uh, left, right, mixed down from that. Um, subgroups, auxes, mix minus, control here. Uh, matrices, I can create whatever type of matrix size I want. And then the rest of my components, um, DCAs, mute groups, and solos, those are all standard. I don't have to eat up my sources for those. Now to go over kind of just the, some of the basic uh, user interface here. Um, notice on the, the, the surface here we have three banks of eight faders. Now each of those banks um, can actually move when we use a scroll section. So if I hit scroll, what I'm doing is I'm actually moving eight channels at a time or one bank at a time over. So for instance, when we had it here in the first one, I have not one through eight. If I scroll over one, it moves me to nine through 16 and on down. Another way I can use this is through um, setting up isolates. So if I wanted to, I can isolate one bus or, or, or one um, uh, fader, page. fader page there. So these ones can move uh, independently, so I can have channels here still, or I can go into DCA bus here, and I can actually uh, have access to my DCAs without changing these other two banks. So what I can do with that, nice thing to show you, is that I can have uh, what we call a DCA spill. In essence, when I hit uh, a DCA and I double tap the select button, it'll spill the components of that DCA. So that mix of, say, for instance, I hit drums, all of that mix shows up on the next fader bank here, and I can adjust that mix how I would like. So that's a DCA spill. Just to show you another example, I can hit double click vocals, and now I have access to all my vocals here in one place. So a nice quick way to, to get around. 
The other thing I'd like to show you is if we unisolate here. Now, my channels, I do have all these sections. It might be hard to keep scrolling down. I can scroll all day if I want to get to a certain channel. What's a quicker way I can get there? We also have uh, what we call anchor. So if I double hit on a scroll, notice that there's kind of a sub menu within my um, scribble strips here. And that sub menu is actually assigned um, uh, via the user to jump to certain sections. So for instance, I set up one to jump to electric guitar. So if I hit electric guitar here, that'll jump me to that section in my entire channel group. So for instance, if there's a, a certain section that I want to get to, maybe I need to get to my lead vocalist, I can hit lead vocal, my lead vocal starts there, and my other banks will follow uh, just like that. Um, your traditional layer system here, um, I showed you the channel and the, uh, the output section. I also have user-defined layers. So I have a user-defined layer one, two, and three, and those can be assigned to be anything you want. So if you want to have channels, a mix of auxes, matrices, all those uh, can be uh, accessed right here. Um, if I get over into my, my last uh, area there is actually f uh, a bank of four channels, and those are what you'd call your money channels. Um, something you need quick access to. I can jump into, say, my lead vocalist um, input channel, or maybe a reverb return, or something like that. I have quick access to this. Of course, I want my my main out there if I have a main. Um, so that stays the same. It's basically isolated all the time. If I move up from that bank of four faders, we have. Another user assignable section, which uh, gives me four um, rotary encoders and also eight buttons. And actually, there's three banks of those four and eight. So actually, I can assign many different um, functions to those, something I need to get to quick. So for buttons, maybe it's something like a mute group. Maybe it's a tap tempo for my effects. Or uh, my rotary, maybe I want to just use this as, as if it was a channel strip, and maybe I could have my gain at the top of my lead vocalist, for instance. Um, getting over into the touch screen, um, basically what we have for on any particular channel, our select will come up eight at a time, so this bank. Now my touch screen will follow whichever bank that is. So I'm in the middle bank now. If I hit a select button over here, now I have these channels up on my main screen here. And from my main screen, I can see a nice readout of my channel strip. So for instance, here's my, um, my, my gain parameters. Here's where I could access my phantom power, my pad. Here's also where I can assign. So we actually have uh, three assignments that you can do. So um, input one, and then an alternate. And I don't have to eat up a channel. I can jump to an alternate channel. And then we have a TR. So if you have a playback machine, you can actually access that real quickly. Then we have two dynamics processors in the channel, as well as a uh, uh, four-band graphic EQ, or yeah, four-band uh, e parametric EQ with a uh, high-pass and low-pass filter on that guy. And I can actually change the order of that. So if I wanted to go um, have my dynamics post-EQ, I can hit post-EQ. And you notice my readout, I can see exactly where my channel path is going. I have delay parameters per input and output. Here's where I have my, my auxiliary sends, so I can ascend per channel. I can also jump into a sends on fader. So if I hit sends on fader here, I press my aux button here, keep this window up, and I can actually toggle between all the different mixes that I might have. So I back out of that. Finishing up my, uh, my, my channel flow here, I have um, um, my painting, so I can have uh, 5.1. Right now we're set up as an LCR. And then last but not least, we have a DCA group and mute group assigned from here as well. Just to highlight a few more things, um, we have uh, an effects library. So we have um, eight stereo effects. You can also set them up as uh, uh, dual mono effects, if you like. Um, quite a bit of old roll and vintage stuff, some boss effects built in there as well. Um, and then you can access those just by touching on them. No, notice my uh, bottom encoders will um, be used however my menu uh, allows me to. So all the transitions and, and pieces are right here. Um, and then if I have uh, want to add some graphic EQs, I can go into this graphic EQ menu. I have uh, 32, 
31 band graphic EQs. Each of those can actually be made into a parametric EQ as well, just by tapping right here, parametric EQ. Now I have an eight band parametric EQ. I can group these if I want to. So if I have multiple wedges that I want to have all the same EQ, I can group all those together and just uh, change their parameters one time. Um, so that's kind of the overview of the console. So obviously a really great, uh, very in-depth console, lots of uh, processing paths. I don't think we talked about it necessarily, but it does have 128 processing paths that you can assign kind of however you want to between inputs, mixes, groups, submixes, mix minus, all that kind of stuff. So very flexible in the architecture that way. All right, so the one question everyone's going to have is when is it shipping and how much will it cost? Well, we, uh, our target shipping date is uh, end of February 2015. Um, and in cost, we like to talk in terms of systems since you will need audio in and out of the system. So um, with the uh, M5000 and two of the 2416 units combined, we're looking at around $26,000. Okay. So very, very aggressive on the pricing. It's a really good looking console. Obviously, uh, we need to spend some more time on it before we can make a final evaluation, but everything I've seen so far is very favorable. I do like the configurability of it. I like the color coding. Um, I like the flexibility of the architecture. So there's a lot of good stuff here. And the fact that it integrates nicely with my favorite personal mixers, the M48s is nice. And you'll be able to control those right from the console as well, which is cool. So a lot of good stuff here. So, and you guys have put together a really nice website to kind of go through this whole thing as well. And that's, uh, that's at rollandsystemsgroup.com. Yeah, you can link to the, 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 the uh, page from rollandsystemsgroup.com to check out the M5000. Yep. Okay, cool. So um, here you go. Audio consoles at a lighting show. Who would have who thunk? So um, anyway, yeah, thanks for uh, walking us through that. And uh, check out the new Roland M5000. <laughs>